Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and this is kind of, not really, sort of a review of Green Lantern Season 2, number one. I've got all my comic set up for the afternoon. I got the question, and I'm gonna do some on Narwhal, so I can dedicate the rest of the day to uh, finish checking these print files for Iron Sights 1 Remastered and Iron Sights 2 Psycho. So anyway, this is Green Lantern Season 2. Um, Grant Morrison and Liam Sharp wanted to do two years, but you know, Liam Sharp takes a while, so they took a break. And then I guess they're doing some 5G reboot of all the characters on Earth. So, season two is being cut short. I, I read this. Um, it's it's okay. Uh, it's, it's more understandable than most of his stuff. Grant Morrison obviously loves a franchise that I don't. Um, he likes to do a bunch of lore. He likes to do stuff like this where he just throws out like a million ideas and a million new characters. But I find it kind of like a little annoying. <laughs> like he'll he'll refer to like if he won't say soldier, he'll call them like a war farmer or something like that. And and the first time you're like, oh, that's kind of clever. And like the 30th time in one issue, you're like, can you just call things what they are and like speed it up with having a plot? So the plot is that the the gar uh, um. The Guardians are uh, promoted, or they basically, not promoted, but they're basically saying, hey, we got to go to this other thing, so see you later. And so now they're going to create some new Guardians, some young Guardians, who are kind of like cosmic millennials. And that's about it. Like, there's a good solid story here. It's fine. But knowing this is all being hurried up so they can launch 5G and then basically scuttle the ship is... Not that interesting. What I did find very distracting was the amount of ads to which this be felt like it was mostly ads. So we got this freaking for people in other countries or you don't live near Chicago. DC has spent a weird amount of space in their comics for the last six months advertising Sven Gulli on MeTV. Yeah. Everyone from Chicago is like, oh my God, Sven Gulli. And everyone else is like, what the hell? Grease paint mustache? What is this, the 1920s? Uh, so anyway, in this book, we got a weird amount of ads. And, okay, so we got one for Hell Arisen. I gotta tell you, this this Dan DiDio, like, let's make everything based on, like, heavy metal from the 80s is so AARP. So we got that, but that's kind of, like, still kind of, like, mainstream DC. And then we got comic book adaptation of a YA novel. A YA centered book about Harley Quinn. A YA version of Zatanna. A YA version of Batman. And a YA reboot of Amethyst. And then a Y A. Do, do, do you see? And a Y A. It's like whoa, wow, and a Y and a Y A. What is going on? So as far as I can tell, this is what it's looking like. Five G is the last gasp of DC trying to sell superhero comics. Now apparently it's going to go super woke, Mad Lib style with just like spin. Martian Manhunter is now Hispanic. Spin again. Uh, um, you know, uh, Blue Beetle is now trans. Spin again. Superman is gay. Spin again. Um, that I was talking about how it's going to split into two things. We're going to get Black Label, which is going to be the high end, you know, high quality teams, and also Kelly Sue DeConnick on characters that everyone knows and likes. And then YA. And I assumed it as a split. It was going to be about 50 50. But now I'm thinking it's going to be about 25% black, black label. And about 75% like, um, what if like Bruce was like, he was like a teenager and it was like me and blah, blah, blah. And I do not know that there's enough of a market for like umpteen versions of characters that normies have heard of doing their teenage adventures. I just, I don't get it. This actually had me kind of worried for the future of uh, uh, DC. Um, so that's really it. It's a very short, I mean, if you're a Green Lantern fan, I absolutely think you're going to really like this book. If you're not a Green Lantern fan, eh. Um, but I'm really interested, especially industry insiders and just people who are just good at analyzing, like, what's up with that? You know what I actually thought? 
I thought that Green Lantern might have gotten miscategorized, you know, with the people who do the mix of the ads. And somehow that this got like, oh, Green Lantern, that's a YA book or something like that. Because like, I don't see the average Green Lantern, you know, Grant Morrison fan really wanting to see Amethyst or a cutesy pie, LOL, so random version of Batgirl. Like, what? Um, so, yeah, is DC transitioning to being a primarily a YA publisher? You tell me, because just going off this alone, that it feels like that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone. Give them to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're finding original content and an original lawsuit. Links are in the description, and I will have more uh, new and old comic reviews up all this weekend. Thanks. Bye.